recent weeks, we have hosted for you many of the candidates running to replace veteran Congresswoman Ileana ross Leighton, who has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Congresswoman. Oh, happy Congress birthday. Women. Feliz cumpleaños, <laughs> Ileana. All right, it is one of the most watched races in the entire country. Maria Piero is a Republican candidate and a veteran teacher for the Miami-Dade Public Schools. She holds a doctorate in mathematics and science education and has campaigned actively in 2016 for Donald Trump. Ms. Peiro, good morning. Great We're to glad have you morning. here. Thank you for having me here. All right, so you have a distinguished career as an educator for yes. more than two decades. Why are you pivoting, switching directions, running for Congress? Because I love my country. This country gave me the freedom that I lost in Cuba. I'm a daughter of an ex-political prisoner. I lived under communism. And this is a way for me to give back to the country that gave me everything that I have today. I decided in 2016, I'm actually the only candidate running in District 27 who challenged Ileana Ross Lane in 2016 in the primary. I started pretty late, but I got a good share of the votes uh, only two months right before election. And um, I wasn't feeling represented back then. And I decided, you know, instead of complaining and calling and just complaining, right. I'm just going to go ahead and make a run for it. And in the district uh, where you say you were not feeling represented, mm -hmm. this is a district that is becoming more moderate, mm -hmm. leading toward the left a little bit. And in fact, Hillary Clinton won this district mm -hmm. by a significant amount, 16 or 17 points. Mm -hmm. um, and Let's take that fact and what you just told us, that you've gotten endorsements already from Florida Right to Life, from mm -hmm. Florida's for Immigration Enforcement, indicating you are very conservative. How are you going to be running such a conservative race in a, in a district that's becoming so much more moderate? Well, um, you know, we have a lot of Hispanics, and Hispanic, uh, Hispanics tend to be more conservative when it comes to social issues. A lot of them tend to be pro-life. And uh, that's going to be uh, something that's going to tie me to the Hispanic community. Uh, immigration, you would find that most legal immigrants are actually against illegal immigration because they did things the right way and they feel that people should not be doing, you yeah. know, coming in here illegally and doing it, yeah. getting in front of everyone else in the I, line. I, I, I would say most <laughs> Americans are against and Americans, illegal yes, immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, we'll get maybe to that. Let me mm -hmm. ask you on your website. You tout uh, your membership and your endorsement, get an A rating from the National Rifle Association, the NRA. Um, after the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas massacre, the tragedy there, uh, the legislature passed, the governor signed a bill extending, a, uh, creating a three-day waiting period and making it the age 21 to buy a long gun in the state of Florida. Do you support that? Well, that's fine. However, uh, my issue is when it, they talk about uh, get, getting rid of certain uh, types of guns, because I don't think that's going to solve the issue. Assault weapons? Uh, well, they're really uh, semi-automatic weapons. But the thing is that uh, we're not going to solve the issue doing that. I come from a country where I said I lived under tyranny, and we know what could happen when we have an unarmed citi uh, citizenry. And, uh, you know, they'll start with one type of gun, and then they start moving on to the next one. And that's just a no-no for me. Well, you, I would you like really to think focus. Gun owner, excuse me. Do you really think, I mean, there must be 300 million weapons in this country, most of them in legal hands, people who obey the law. Do you really think that gun ownership is in jeopardy in this country? Well, I think that it's in jeopardy because... How so? Uh, because uh, they want to ban certain types of weapons, and I don't think we need to allow this. Well, because military they start one military style assault weapons is really the issue. Well, they're right semi-automatic. They're not military style. Uh, military the style weapons have been banned for yeah. years. Yeah, Ms. Piero, the, the, the AR-15 is a military style weapon. It is the basically the civilian model of a military it's weapon. It's just a model. It's not actually a, a, a military style weapon. But I would like to focus on, as a teacher, uh, in school, dealing with school security yeah. because we are soft targets and uh, the thing that we could do is focus on that by making sure that we uh, have armed guards in our schools. I would like to propose legislation through Congress uh, so that we could give grants to states and school districts uh, so they could hire uh, vets and give them jobs as as armed security that. guards. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this would be an extra layer uh, sometimes there are schools where they one armed guard is not enough. Mm -hmm. We need more because we have several entrances. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to make sure that we get rid of the gun-free zones because, uh, you know, we need to allow teachers 
who are uh, who have concealed weapons and who go through some type of training to be able to uh, carry weapons uh, on school grounds. I'm in favor of that. Dr. Pero, uh, we have such a short time, television time mm -hmm. today. Let's, you, you brought up immigration and mm -hmm. in that district, it's a very important issue. And in the news right now, we're watching the struggle to reunite these children separated at the border. Um, and then conversely, there was an immigration bill that failed that would have had, a, among other things, a path to citizenship for the DACA recipients. And, and in your district, that is a very favorable component of the bill, along with the border wall. How would you have voted on that? And talk about what you see going on now with the border and your perspective on that. Well, I don't think that the two should be mixed. I think they're two separate topics. I think that the Democrats and the Republicans like to play sometimes, you know, the game of let's add this, let's add that so that we could get our way. So I, I don't, I think they're two separate issues. I think that if they're going to do a DACA fix, I think it needs to be done on its own and let it stand on its own. And let's see how everyone votes on that. When, what I would like to focus on is on uh, border security. And I think that is the responsibility of the federal government. We should not even be uh, arguing about this. This is a matter of national security. So I'm for building that great big wall. We need to have a physical barrier to deter uh, border crossing. We also need to make sure that we have more border patrols and that we have that we give them all the tools necessary to deter these border crossings. And what's then, going on with the with the children and the families separated? What's your take on that? Well, my take is that if they don't want their families separated, then they should not come here illegally. Um, uh, we have to be strong on that because if you see, there's a lot of yeah. people that are coming across the borders. They're 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 dying. They're, uh, we have a lot of uh, people who are being raped by coyotes, and we need to make sure that we deter this. Not only for the security of our country, but the security of these people who are who yeah. are making this dangerous trek. Yeah, Dr. Maria Pereira, we're so glad you came in. Thank you. Brief, but uh, we're you know we're very okay. happy to <laughs> let you present your point of view. Thanks very okay, much. Okay, thank you for Thanks. having me.